Welcome back to the Express at Sunset Beach, rollerblading around the seawall. It's a popular sport, but you know, there's a lot more to the culture of blading than just going around in circles. And at the end of today's Express, we've got a jaw dropping look at aggressive blading. Right now, we're looking into the culture of the burqa with a local filmmaker's new documentary. <laughs> It's a film all about the burqa and a local filmmaker's quest to unravel her confusion about this garment. I set out to find out why this cloth still exists. See, because I lived in, in Canada for, you know, for so many years and I always saw it on BBC and CNN as this blue garment. So I assumed that hip hip hooray, the Taliban are out and, you know, NATO has come in to help that it's going to be gone. But when I went to Afghanistan, I walked around the market and I saw that 75% of women are still wearing this. I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense anymore. So Brishke set out to interview a variety of people about the burqa and their answers surprised her. <laughs> I think the power to evolve lies not in the stitching of the tailors, but in the hands of the women here. Brishke's filmmaking took her to Afghanistan, Amsterdam, and Vancouver. Only after everything was filmed, when I came back and I sat down and I reviewed everything, then I understood, okay, this is a film about my confusion, okay, and I have found some clarity at the end about it, I get it. I understand what this burqa is to me. And now the viewers will decide what it is for them and, and the goal is that viewers can watch it whether they're in Afghanistan or outside and kind of go down their own rabbit hole. And let's see, like, are we ever going to find the, the, the root of it? A question that is sure to be answered by those who see the film. In Vancouver, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. Story of Burka premiered at the 2012 Doxa Film Festival. You can contact filmmaker Brishke Ahmed at chitchatproductions.ca. Now we're going even deeper with our next story on The Express, featuring a Langley family that suffered a tragedy this year, losing wife and mother to ALS. But in this heartbreaking story, the community is focused on hope. Jeremy and his three children love to laugh and play. They're spending as much time together as they can after going through a tough couple of years, ever since mother and wife Melissa got very sick. So we went and went to see a doctor, or a family doctor, saw a neurologist. Uh, so I went through spinal taps, uh, blood work, all these different kind of things. So they did more testing on that and determined that it was a very high likelihood that she had ALS and um, a portion called the FTD, frontal temporal dementia, which is um, early onset Alzheimer's. Melissa struggled until this past March when she passed away. She was only 30 years old and left children aged two, four, and six. They're all still pretty young. They've lived with their mom, not being their mom for about two years now. Maddox doesn't really know what it is to really have a mom just because She's been sick since almost the month after he was born and uh, went from there. So that's uh, who I feel the worst for because he doesn't, he won't get to know what it is like to be growing up or to have a mom. In the face of heartbreak and loss for the White family, their community has rallied to provide for them. A former neighbor has helped to organize a large part of those efforts. I had no idea that that hit as young as 29. I attended her memorial. I took my son with me because uh, he knew her well. And sitting there uh, listening and watching uh, this take place and knowing myself that I was turning 30 just a couple weeks later, I couldn't imagine what her family was going through. What began as a dinner fundraiser at the Fort Pub and Grill in Fort Langley is now also an online auction with many donated items, as well as a raffle. And Anita has seen the difference these acts of kindness have meant to a family overcoming tragedy. I went over to their house to deliver those kids uh, clothes that were donated, a beautiful dress for Jordana and 
some really cute clothes for the boys and some accessories from another company. And, uh, and I just to see the smiles on their faces, to see them light up and get excited in the face of everything that they're experiencing is really, really encouraging. Information on all the fundraisers can be found at White Family Trust Fund. .weebly.com, but the online auction ends soon. So it closes on Father's Day, which is incredibly fitting, just being that uh, by participating you're making a difference in the life of Jeremy and you're giving him the ability to, to worry about taking care of his kids rather than worrying about the finances and the stress that that brings uh, after such a loss. It's just uh, overwhelming to see all the kind of support that people would give to someone who they wouldn't even know otherwise than just reading that something in the paper. So um, it just shows that uh, people actually do care in today's society still. It's not all just a me, me, me thing. Money raised has already surpassed expectations, which has been a miracle to the young family and a testament to the kindness of a community. I'm Paul McClellan in Langley for The Express. <laughs> The website is whitefamilytrustfund.weebly.com. The fundraising events are posted there, along with other details on how you can join the community and lend a hand. You're watching The Express, and we are picking up the pace after the break. Let's sit nice and tall and close our eyes. Learn the one, two, three of triathlon training with the Whistler Adaptive Sports Program. Hit the wall and learn to fly with the sport of aggressive rollerblading. The Express. We are your local voice. The Express is brought to you in part by Plum, fashion supplier to host Johanna Ward. Be part of a winning team. Army Cadets is a great place for young adults interested in making the great outdoors their classroom. For more information on this exciting and free program in Surrey, White Rock, Vancouver, Seashell, Port Coquitlam, Langley or Delta, call 778-837-9093 today. Welcome back to the Express at Sunset Beach. This place just makes you want to get moving. Whether you want to try some trick rollerblading, which we're going to show you at the end of today's Express, hop on your bike, go for a stroll. But we're not the only active community. We're joining Nicole Fitzgerald in Whistler Village, which is a great place to play for people of all ages and abilities, right? That's right, Johanna. The Whistler Adaptive Sports Program ensures that everyone enjoys the great outdoors. The nonprofit organization provides programming for people with disabilities. And in the summer, that means means getting ready for a triathlon. Let's sit nice and tall and close our eyes and just start to let go of your day. I do like doing skiing and yoga and biking and all that stuff. Breathe in, breathe out. Brad Monteith is like any other Whistlerite. The active outdoorsman enjoys pushing his body to learn new things. Downward dog at the first, that, that, that was definitely the hardest. Uh, pose that I ever done. But yeah, it was good, it felt good. Come on this side, Brad. That's it. But yeah. recreational sport Hi. wasn't enough. He needed goals, he needed teammates, and a new challenge. The Whistler Try a Try race was the perfect fit. The triathlon went really well. Um, felt good, ran, ran good, yeah. And the Whistler Adaptive Sports Program's new triathlon program helped him get there. The six-week program invites aspiring athletes who have cognitive challenges such as autism, Down syndrome, or anxiety disorder to train three to five days a week. We wanted to exchange recreational programs uh, and start to introduce a competitive element. Right. And now we're taking that and exchanging them for even longer term goals like training for a half marathon next year. Okay, reach them all the way up, expand. The program is designed around athletes' abilities. Like any national team, they undergo fitness testing twice a year and then instructors such as Crystal Brown build a program around those findings. Good job. We had an athlete who came to us and said, you know, they really want to work on the focus aspects and uh, being able to just really calm themselves down getting ready for competitions. And we are really fortunate to find Crystal Brown. And then walk your hands back to the middle. The program is already seeing results. Most of the athletes have lost on average 25 pounds, but what is most important is what they gained. You get to 
meet new people and just have fun. They're always very friendly and very nice and kind to me. Um, and I always have a great time with them. And we're always, um, I'm always the funny one in the group. <laughs> Individuals no longer. This close-knit team led by instructors such as Chris Kennedy is growing stronger. So we're all down at that end and then we'll do the same thing back. If we have the opportunity to add a residential aspect, I anticipate we would see athletes from across BC and Canada relocate to Whistler to access this type of programming because it's so unique. A unique program tailor-made to one-of-a-kind individuals. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. The Whistler Adaptive Sports Program offers all kinds of activities for people with disabilities, including kayaking, canoeing, hiking, and mountain biking in the summertime. You can get details at whistleradaptive.com. And for more ideas of things to do, we've got the 411 on your FYI. Radar's Quality Assured Collisions FYI is presented by Radar's Quality Assured Collision, an ICBC Valet accredited repair facility. This Saturday, June 16th, it's the 67K Cross Country Race NSCU Squamish Test of Metal. Catch the mountain bike action at Brennan Park. June 23rd and 24th, head to the Royal Vancouver Yacht Club and enjoy world-class racing on the water and community fun on the shore at the National Bank Easter Seals Waves Regatta. Hey cool cats, it's back and it's bigger than ever. June 22nd kicks off the TD Vancouver International Jazz Festival, followed by a free opening weekend on the grounds of the Vancouver Art Gallery. Radar's Quality Assured Collisions FYI was presented by Radar's Quality Assured Collision. Also, remember at the beginning of today's show, we went to Shop Task to get fit for rollerblades and find out what to look for. Well, if you'd like to join the Shop Task meetup, it happens down here at Sunset Beach, 6 o'clock on Sundays. And if you want to see what the pros can do on their blades, we're going to leave you with a look at Leon's mad skills. Thanks for watching The Express, only on Shaw TV.